Well, welcome to another episode of The Deep Dive, where we take um, the topic from the weekend and just take a deeper look uh, at it, whether it's the passage or the topic. Uh, today, joined by Dan Borth and Chris Bantz. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas, Brad. Thank you. Yes. You can see we've decorated since our last uh, deep dive. Um, we have taken a minute. You know, we've had a lot of stuff going on at our at our church, and so just trying yeah. to figure out, hey, what's the best rhythm for some of these recordings moving forward? And then also mm-hmm. December this year, um, just because of the nature of the series, it's very topical, uh, kind of gave us the opportunity to just do one deep dive for our Joy to the World series. So that's that's what you're listening to now, um, if you were yeah. confused. Um, yeah, so it would be four times as long, right? Four times as long. To cover yep. all the weeks. Uh-huh. Yep, so two hours is what this one's going to be. Yeah, and, let's, uh, in the spirit of Christmas, let's give these fine people a gift. And let's, <laughs> let's make it five minutes shorter. Yeah, we'll be a little bit shorter Just uh, for you. today. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we are in a series called Joy to the World, where we've been looking at... Uh, the song "Joy to the World," uh, this classic Christmas hymn, carol. I don't. Do you guys know the difference between a hymn and a carol? Is there? I'm rolling with hymn. Okay. If it's you know, two, three hundred years old, just because the written the age by of a it. guy in a white wig, probably in a pub hymn. somewhere. Yeah. That is a good question. I would assume a hymn is like explicitly religious, mm. and a carol might be might not be. You know, uh, more one hundred two point five. Hmm. What about like, like Carey. in yeah. soccer where they have like the songs explicitly like written out for their teams? Is that a hymn? Is it religious in nature? I think for a lot of people it is. I think for a lot of people it is. It's very interesting. Let's pose that to the readers. Comment below. Yes. Uh, what's the difference between a hymn, <laughs> a, a, hymn carol, and a carol, and soccer? Yes. Yeah. We'll get Caleb on this you know, sometime and have him explain. That's a good question. I don't know the difference between yeah. a hymn and a carol. Yeah. I mean, I have different imaginative pictures for yeah. both, yeah. but I, I wouldn't be able to break it down musically. Yeah. yeah. Academically speaking, they talk about like ancient Christian hymns mm-hmm. and never ancient Christian carols. So That's maybe true. that has, maybe your point about time has something to do I with... I think the Psalms have something to do with it too. Like hymns often draw from some kind of psalm mm-hmm. where... Oftentimes in more contemporary modern worship music, we wouldn't call those hymns, but often they're um, not drawing as tightly and as closely on the Psalms. So if that's the case, then Joy to the World is definitely a hymn. Definitely a hymn. Oh, absolutely. Because it Psalm 98 comes from Psalm 98. And it's several hundred years old. Yeah. Yeah. So look at us. Look at that. We cracked it. We're probably Uh, wrong. Caleb Caleb will correct us in the comments. Yeah, well, I, I think with a hymn, there's probably some worship you know, purpose to it. Whereas a carol, maybe, maybe not so much. Mm. Cool. We will get with Caleb and uh, get back to you. Um, So my question is this, you know, joy to the world. Why, you know, there's lots of Christmas hymns we could have chosen. Yeah. Why, what is it about joy to the world that is either especially relevant or um, just makes for a good series? So where the idea originally came from is, Four, five, six years ago, I'm sitting in a class at Covenant Theological Seminary, and one of the professors, Michael Williams, gets up there, mm. and he talks about a book that he wrote that is called Far as the Curse mm-hmm. is Found. And I thought, huh, I really haven't been exposed to this vocabulary like this before. And he pointed out that it's actually drawn on from the third verse or stanza in Joy to the World, which is often left out. Like if you ever hear Joy to the World, if there is a verse or a line left out, it is that one. Yes. Which is sad because arguably it's theologically maybe even the most poignant and rich Mm -hmm. out of all four of them. But it is a song that's incredibly theologically rich and also pretty catchy and it's got a nice beat. And so we thought, what does it look like for us to take something in the common knowledge of Christmas culture and Advent season and use that as a framework to maybe give us a new and not so common angle at the nativity narrative. So we were looking for a hymn that could be disguised as a carol. Is that what you're saying? Don't call me carol. I'm just saying. (laughs) You know, what's interesting about that third verse to the point of it getting left out, especially in like um, what will get played on Mm KEZK. But um, I read somewhere that the Wesleyan traditions actually have a rephrasing of that. 
because the far as the curse is found language um, yes. is they've edited it. Is it yeah, they yeah. they they've found a different way to say a similar thing. Yeah, but from their theological perspective, too reformed for them. It, it is a little too <laughs> reformed. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. them. Also, let's not miss this. Dan still listens to the radio. <laughs> Yikes. Sorry, no, I'm, okay, uh, I'm actually <laughs> taking subtle jabs at Ben, who's not with us. But since it's on the internet, hi, Ben. I love you. Uh, um, yeah. He admitted to listening to KEZK uh, mm, yeah. since November 1st. Uh-huh. Um, in, in his last sermon, like, yeah, he, he said so publicly. So I'm well, not he actually, outing him. I'm just and accused <laughs> relaying many of us for being legalistic. Yeah. So coming out of the mm. Galatians series, we have have words for him. But yeah, I'm just saying. Anyway, um, I, have either of you read Hidden Christmas by Tim Keller? No, no. So in Hidden Christmas, um, he basically asserts that. The Christmas season is one of the best times for evangelism because uh, so many of the Christmas motifs, the Christmas story is something that is familiar um, through because of songs, because of um, just the Christmas story, you know, Charlie Brown, like because of, of all these different ways. Yeah. So I, I was wondering if that had any, you know, implications for why Joy of the World was picked is just an opportunity to tell a story through song, through a song yeah. that people are familiar with already. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it fits so well because we're kind of in the paradox of the first advent has come. We're waiting on the second advent um, in some ways similar to f- first century Israel. We are a people experiencing darkness and sin, longing for the return of a Messiah. Mm-hmm. There is discontinuity, though, in that we've had the fulfillment of Jesus and his life and death and resurrection in the cross, and we get to be post that and we get to see all that in the rear view mirror instead of approaching us on the road. So there are similarities and dissimilarities, but with Psalm 98 and how Joy to the World was originally written, which I think we've all mentioned at all the campuses and all the sermons, it was originally for the second advent, the Mm -hmm. second coming of Christ, but was so perfectly uh, able to be in tune with Christmas, it became an instant classic. I mean, it's right up there with right Mariah Carey's Christmas song. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's so good. All right. So, Joy to the World was originally written by Isaac Watts. Yes. He's a you know 1700s lived you know in England. Yeah. Uh, he's written many hymns that we're probably all familiar with on some on some level. Mm-hmm. Um, as you already mentioned, he he wrote it right as a, a response uh, to Psalm 98. Psalm 96, 11 and 12, and Genesis 3, right? These are the kind of the scriptures that he had in mind when he penned this, uh, this poem. And uh, what I want to do is I just want to read, uh, read the poem for us. And Chris is going to act it out. He is going to act it out. Um, yeah. Good I thought job. the interpretive dance filming was tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, sorry for those who are just listening to this. You will not see his... Moves. If we promise Ben will do an interpretive dance to Joy to the World, does that become, like, has to happen? Well, I think the way the creative stuff works here is we just tell him. Yeah. The communicator. Really? Like, I think Pastor P would do it. I Pastor think he P. would. Okay. Stay tuned. Or he would just, like, look at us weirdly with, like, a smile. <laughs> you know, that, like, laugh, like he's going along with it. But wait, yeah. what's happening? <laughs> we love you, Pastor P. Um, all right. So, Joy to the World, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. Dan, a couple weeks ago, uh, you opened this series for us at uh, Mid Rivers and you read the poem. And that was the first time I'd ever heard it read as a poem and not, you know, just the the popular, you know, melody that that we all know. And I, I don't know, there's something with poetry, I think, that speaks uh, where we're able to communicate maybe deeper truer things um, in a way that just simply stating the fact mm-hmm. uh, isn't able to do. Um, I think that's one of the reasons the Psalms are so powerful and, and resonate so much. Um, as uh, as believers, as Christians, as humans, right, um, 
I, I guess have you guys like what uh, role has poetry um, or music played uh, in your kind of either walk as a as a believer um, or as a person or as a pastor? Uh, poetry is huge uh, for me. Some of it can, has come through. Uh, music that has strong lyrics Mm -hmm. um there's a few uh authors and musicians reese roper is one um actually uh, most of most of where my mind's been in terms of processing um the emotion of faith has been developed from music Mm -hmm. Uh, i grew up kind of in a setting where uh my parents very much loved the lord and it wasn't a wrestling match for them to connect their head and their heart uh for me i part of it is i was good in a classroom so like i'm good at propositional truth in general um but i also kind of grew up in in 1990s you know like um evangelical culture and there's a lot of pressure for performance Uh in that um i in particular i grew up with a a a community that had a strong bent to always uh suspiciously eye our larger community which made me always Uh just never feel at home Uh and so it's hard when you're a teen and you're processing emotions and you don't feel at home anywhere Um, but, and you feel like the key is in your head, Uh like that's not a great recipe, uh, for much more than anxiety. And so music for myself and my friends, as we were processing our faith meant a lot. Um, and as it turns out, some of my, uh, now my favorite authors are, they have the deepest appreciations for poetry, um, and, and other things. So that's, that's a little bit of, uh, my answer to your question, like poetry has been huge for me. Because it's it hasn't given me containers to hold ideas, it's given those containers holes so that those ideas get out a little mm, bit. That's good. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just think our universe is held together by what story, and poetry gives us a unique angle, perspective, access to story similar to how parable does it's just a slightly different medium to which we get to understand uh not only everything around us but ourselves Mm. i think poetry is so often just a beautiful and even at times painful mirror Mm. for ourselves that can be so helpful that we might not find in other artistic mediums quite as explicitly i have a hot take Poetry mm-hmm. um, is probably one of the more undervalued of the arts right now, mm-hmm. but one of the spaces that we we may, as just people living in our day and time, have room to gain mm-hmm. from it mm-hmm. because it's it's intentionally produced. Like there's not really a, a bracket for thoughtless poetry mm-hmm. that I'm aware of, but it's produced differently than all the other production stuff around us. Um, yeah. It's not necessarily meant to entertain. It's not even always meant to please. Sometimes it's simply meant to express. Um, And we don't, at my experience has been, we don't have a lot of great healthy spaces for expression. Mm -hmm. Um, Most of our stuff has a lot of movement to it. It's trying to accomplish something or go somewhere. Uh, And the human heart isn't always ready to move. Yeah. So... um, yeah, I described it to someone else a couple weeks ago as um, I don't always have a lot of patience or at least the patience required mm-hmm. to um, appreciate and to like enter in to poetry. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it's a discipline that I, I definitely need to, to grow in. But a lot of the people that um, I look up to or spend time with, um, they, you know, I think of Kyle Bradley, right? Who, you know, mm. he, he is a poet. I mean, he's written even the works, the pieces that we're using in our services this month, like he's written those. And I remember we sat down to just kind of brainstorm, like what, 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 what was that content going to look like? And I said, Hey man, my hope is that you write some awesome stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll give you some keywords or some ideas and I'm going to throw them at you. But cause for me, it's the, the whole act of sitting down to just produce something or to do yeah. something. Um, there's a disconnect for me when it comes to poetry. It's why I appreciate the people, you know, people who have that gift and who can take words and, you know, um, craft them in a way uh, that, that really does maybe speak to the truth of, of the reality the the universe, the story that mm-hmm. we're in, um, in a way that's compelling. 
Yeah, poetry like parable is extremely powerful because it's something that can f- go in your back pocket. And sometimes when you come to a moment in life or um, a place of transition or pivot or whatever, sometimes that thing in your back pocket kind of comes back uh-huh. as a v- voice of beauty and truth and reason and, and justice and in those moments. So Mm -hmm. it's something that is a little bit like a time bomb. Sometimes the first read through is not actually the moment of integration. It actually comes much later Mm -hmm. when you're in the moment itself and you think, oh, that feeling is this. Mm -hmm. Just like the parables. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Solomon gives us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the, in the Psalms, right? I mean, we've all, we've all taken Dr. Collins's Psalms class and The you know the one of the main questions he asks is what shaping effect would singing this song in a congregational setting have on yeah. you know the the people of God and so I guess that's as we get kind of back into joy to the world mm-hmm. what effect what impact should singing this song have on us as individuals as us as congregation or church members hmm. feels like it has the character of raising the line of sight to the horizon hmm. um, because it does have this, it, it, it exists in these two spaces of the first and the second advent. Uh-huh. Um, and so in singing it, I think there is this understanding of um, the implications of Christ's coming, but mm-hmm. there, there are these, like he rules the world with truth and grace. Um, <laughs> that line has always struck me as interesting because I believe those things about Jesus. Uh-huh. But truth and grace are two of the least common experiences I have in life, mm. and and so for me, this um, working through this as we have in this setting has been great because it's caused me to slow down and reflect and think about why am I singing this, uh-huh. and especially that line has this like oh looking at the horizon, I experience his truth and grace now. I know that they're real. I see their effects. But like my long view is on that being the the full reality, the total reality. So it's already, but not yet. Um, it has that effect for me. Yeah, I so appreciate it. I mean, um, so many many of our contemporary songs are very like I, me, my first person centered. Mm. But it's interesting. It, it the song has a clear call to action, but it's actually asking us to join a story in creation that's much bigger than ourselves. Mm. Like we now join with the rocks, fields, hills, and floods, something much larger in scope than just I, me, my. So I I think it powerfully draws us out of the individualistic, consumeristic nature of ours. It's heightened at times at Christmas time. And it asks us to actually see that the cosmos, like the entire universe, mm-hmm. is now um, in raptures of joy for the infant in the manger that is also the king that comes back, white horse, mm-hmm. tattoo on a sigh, tongue that's a sword. I mean, mm-hmm. th- th- those things are held mm-hmm. in, in tension. Yeah, which is really cool. And like what I also hear you saying, Chris, is this whole – story that we're in it's yes. not just an individual story right it's it's right. it's justification and what jesus has done on the cross and the relationship yeah. that's personal in nature that i have with him yes that's all good yes but it's bigger than that yeah and his kingship is bigger than that yeah absolutely like in the new heavens and the new earth it's not just that we are as individuals present i mean that is immensely important mm-hmm. but it's also like Tornadoes and rust and thorns that infest the ground are no longer part of that reality. Mm. It's all redeemed. I have this image in my mind. So most movies that I'm familiar with, when they open, a lot of times they start with like the furthest out perspective and they progressively like over the credits and that they zoom in, Mm -hmm. you know, with some epic score, but they zoom in onto a person or a small Tatooine. group of people. Yeah. 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 We're all thinking Star Wars. Yeah. 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 Why not? <laughs> it's a Christmas movie. Actually talk about Tatooine most at this table. <laughs> at least. That's by um, design. Anyway. Um, and <laughs> what, what I'm thinking is this song has that maybe the part of the gift of this song is it has the ability for any of us at whatever moment we encounter it, sing it, reflect on it 
to start almost focused too narrowly and then to get broader. And I think like the first thing we would see is it's not just me, it's it's us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there's a history of believers that are longing for the return of Christ. But you keep getting broader and it's creation itself. And the yeah. story is as big as the creator. Um, so it has, uh, in a way, like this, this beautiful effect of giving perspective mm-hmm. by completely like uh, blowing up the the perspective of the lens that we most often start with. Mm. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, yeah. it just keeps getting bigger. Yeah. Mm. That's really good. That's good. That's really good. That's good. <laughs> it was like very off the cuff and hadn't thought about that yet. So, <laughs> yeah. Ponder that later. No, no it, it is. Good. It is. Um, and I do think that that, as if we're reading scripture well, um, those different perspectives, like, come in and out of view, yeah. right? The The fact that th- this story that we're in is so personal and so close that we feel it and can see it in the moment, but also it we have to have an eye on a horizon that's not yet realized here, mm-hmm. right? And I, and I think that's, I think Joy of the World does a great job of holding those things in tangent. It almost speaks to, um, let me look back at these, the, the, the verbiage here, but, um, he's almost speaking as if this thing has already happened, right? Like Isaac mm-hmm. Watts, he's writing about the second coming. He's writing about the return of Christ. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the reasons we've applied this to the incarnation and his first advent is because it's the like it's it's written in the tense that it's already happened. And yet yeah. And we see that in, in the Psalms, we see that in the prophetical books too. So, that, Psalm ninety eight has that uh-huh. same tone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want to uh, close this out by reading Psalm 98, and then, um, yeah, we maybe I, we'll, yeah, go for it. Let me throw one thing yep. in real quick. Um, uh, this comes from a different conversation, but I would point out the, the dynamics of the song and what we've talked about and the breadth of it and the scope of it and the scale mm-hmm. of it is really important for um, the next generation of believers. Yeah. I think it's really important for our kids. Um, I think it's very important... Like if someone were to hypothetically ask, why are we going to church this Christmas? Mm. Part of the reason is because that's good to do this year. True. Part of the reason is because we need to return to the biggest story Mm -hmm. um, and we need to do that movement faithfully or we're going to lose our own perspective on it because Christmas in itself isn't justification enough. The return of the king to restore all things. Mm Mm-hmm absolutely is um yeah yeah Yeah, and i do think there are things especially um you know over this past weekend right we had all those storms um the tornadoes we we have um obviously this pandemic that we're still going through um you know we're wrestling with some stuff as a as a church um Mm -hmm. and like all of this stuff matters a whole lot um because the story that we're in is true and Mm -hmm. jesus is king Jesus is Lord, which means that the actions that we take, our posture towards people, um, the gifts, right, that we exchange <laughs> this year, silly or serious, mm-hmm. right, all of that matters. Um, and it's it's part of us playing our part in that story well. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to read uh, Psalm 98, and then we will uh, maybe tease what's coming um, in January, and then we will close it out. All right. Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre and with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth, and he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Um, Yeah, may that be our our prayer and our cry this mm-hmm. Christmas uh, season as we sing joy to the world again um, and maybe a fresh way. Yeah. Uh, coming up in January, we've got um, kind of a vision series uh, happening. You guys want to tease that just a little bit? Yeah. So we're kicking off the year with some of the 
core kind of tenets and commitments and really things that we're hoping and dreaming and praying for at Calvary. And so we're going to take the whole month to do this. Now, this also just happens to coincide with the 60th anniversary of Calvary. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great opportunity to um, celebrate what God has done in the history of Calvary and the local church in St. Charles County, Uh and also kind of the horizon look, the future look that we get to see what um, and, and dream and hope and walk towards what God is calling us into next through community, through transformation and through leadership. So, yeah, yeah. that's great. Well, excited uh, for that. Again, just a reminder, um, if you have a question that you want to uh, ask, if you have a question that you'd love to hear discussed on a future deep dive, you can submit that at podcasts at calvary.church. Uh, we will get those. We will include those in an Ask the Pastor segment um, in the month to come. We hope that you have a very Merry Christmas, a great New Year. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, we just encourage you to uh, go to our website, calvary.church slash resources. You can find uh, this deep dive and more there, um, as well as all of our content for Joy to the World, our Christmas uh, series at calvary.church slash joy to the world. Go in grace and peace. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas. Thanks for listening to The Deep Dive, a Calvary Church Media Productions podcast. Be sure to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts.